Welcome to our irreverent podcast about spooky things and This is a reminder that this show is rated evil explicit, meaning that your children are not to be present in the room whilst this is playing. Your best bet is to throw them outside and leave them because children are only going to suck away your finances that you could use to do things for yourself like travel the world and buy fine goods. That being said, uh, they shouldn't hear the dirty words we're going to say. Do you want to show them some of the dirty words? Yes, I dare say. We'll be saying coarse language such as f- and t- and c- sucker, and every now and then we'll throw in another t- for good measure, and every now and then, mother. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's great. And you play the piano louder. Yes, you t- motherfucker. Everybody, welcome to the latest and greatest installment of what's the fuck are we call this thing? Damn it, right. Hey, everybody, welcome to the latest and greatest installment of Down to Folk. Now, you may not have heard Down to Folk before, and that's because it's a new format. Because we realized everything that we do is uh, kind of unclean at the moment and needed to be better organized. So, uh, what you will see moving forward, go folk yourself, will be our state episodes. Those are still our bread and butter, the main episodes that you will see, probably about one a month. Then, of course, you've got Deep Folking, where we take deep dives into things that are still a little paranormal, but interesting and good for a conversation on their own. But down to folk? Well, that's when we throw shit at the wall. So welcome to another episode of Throwing Shit at the Wall. We're going to talk about pop culture stuff. Maybe we'll talk about movies. Maybe we'll talk about books, graphic novels, what we saw on TV. Anything interesting. What are we talking about tonight? This week, we're talking about Red Dead Redemption 2. (gasps) Oh, shit. Yes. I like that they're both doing like character voices. Yeah, now. like well, <laughs> you have one character voice. Yeah, I, I, I just did that to intro. Now I you're wanted both to being character. I, to I, I just wanted to bring voice. some excitement. I was gonna be like, "There's a snake in this mic," because that's from Red Dead, right? That's There's it. a snake I'm in my. I'm about to cut. I'm your just mic. kidding. <laughs> this is, should I I'm do an kidding. intro now? Is that what we're gonna? Yeah, do? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just give it a shot. Cause we're gonna put it. all four of these in this. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to what was the name of this podcast again? God, God damn it! All right, Red Dead Redemption Two. Talk about the facts. Fucking cowboy simulator. No, the reason we wanted to talk about this, all of us have played this game. Most of us have beat the campaign. I have not because played it, it because <laughs> it because is boring and I like online grief. Uh, you it's... are the worst person. <laughs> so uh, the reason we want to talk about it is the the impact it had on all of us, also the cultural significance, also the folklore, and the other thing. Brett is just shaking his head because he wants to talk about griefing stories, which we'll, we'll have some there. of that. We'll get we'll get there. The there's rest of us are going to talk on, about why on, it's important. On. Wait, there's a single player? Yes, there's, there is a campaign that you should absolutely play, and we're going to spoil the shit out of it in this I podcast. I don't care. So really that's your care. first warning. We're going to spoil the crap out of Red Dead. If you haven't beaten, we'll do another warning before we get to the actual part where we talk Actually, about the campaign. Actually, no, honestly. No? Just throughout the whole here's, thing? Let's here's the it. warning now, because realistically, one of us is going to fuck up and uh, say it before that. He dies of tuberculosis. That's what happens. Well, Man, you can at least let him ease into it, you yeah, bastard. No, you you haven't even played right the campaign. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, so that's that's what you get. You should yep. just put just beep that out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please answer yeah. that. <laughs> uh, here is the spoiler warning right now before Brett does it again. This is all going to be spoilers. If you don't want that, turn it off immediately. Go. <laughs> this is Hermione dies level spoilers, okay? So just we need to be aware of that as you go into this podcast. Yeah, very important. But that was a sp- fake spoiler. My spoiler was real. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Snape kills Dumbledore. <laughs> just throw a bunch of spoilers in there. Uh, but yeah, work on Red Dead Redemption 2 started right after Red Dead Redemption back in 2010. Uh, Dan Hauser and a handful of key people started f- fleshing out this game and what it would be. 
the team was about 2,000 and spent eight years working on this game. Holy and you can shit. definitely fucking see it. Yeah. No, no, no. Details. Like, that, that, the whole world feels like it was, like, hand-painted. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, so they, they picked up the development of this immediately after. Yeah, a small block. writing team put it together, and then it went full-fledged after uh, Grand Theft Auto V came out. So, yeah, because they had money. Yeah. They had money. Because yeah. L.A. Noir did not get them money. No. Oh. And they realized that's also a great thing, Dan. Uh, they had multiple studios around the world, and they were like, man, this isn't working out. We're putting more stuff out, but some of it's good. Some of it's eh, lackluster and spending a lot, like, especially <laughs> that L.A. Noir spent a shit ton of money on that face rendering system. Here's an and empty man. L.A. that yeah. you can't do shit in. Okay, first of all, I'm, I know I'm the only one here who enjoyed and like completed full gamer score on L.A. Noir. And I all the the you know what? God too. damn it! If Ethan was here for fuck's uh, sake, that's his favorite game. Yeah, it's is his favorite, it's game, his favorite game of yeah. all is time. It? So we'll have to do another one about <laughs> let him just go no. Into L.A. Noire was a fantastic game for what it was, but also fuck all of you because you can thank L.A. Noir and the investment they put into that facial technology for how realistic in everyone in that game looked. Yeah, it's sure. In I'm game. not insulting the technology. I'm insulting the story and lack of things to do in their world. It's an all right story. Was it? I, I like the story. There was nothing to do in that world either. The only thing you could do was go and look at old cars. No, the only thing you could do was go and investigate crimes, which was the point of the fucking game, Dan. No, but then don't that, put it in a Grand Theft Auto style map. I would like to find out that all Dan did in L.A. Noir was drive around the city and get confused. What the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so with all their mistakes, they learn a lot. So with uh, Grand Theft Auto V, they had three protagonists. And they were like, oh, this really worked out. Maybe we'll do that for Red Dead. But what stuck out to them was one of the characters who's basically a retired Ray Liotta character from every Scorsese film, he had a family. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, he's excellent. He has a family, uh, and they realize, oh, man, it kind of brings his character more to life than the other two because of the surrounding characters. And they knew in Red Dead 1 the big challenge was, like, he talks about Dutch, he talks about the gang, and they didn't want to pigeonhole it. So they're like, let's make 23 characters full-fledged that you can interact with and bring them to life. So they spent a majority of the story working on them. So each character, very diverse, uh, going into Dutch and who he is, basically a cult leader, finding every special thing into each one of them. And we, I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on Dutch. Well, uh, before we go to Dutch, I do want to talk about like the fleshing out of the individual characters, oh, yeah. because that, that's actually one of the interesting aspects of the game, is everybody's really had very different interactions at camp. Yeah. Right? Because even the characters that don't seem that important, like Molly O'Shea, for example, you could oh. play that game and Molly O'Shea is just a, a woman... Uh, who just is in the camp that occasionally talks to you about uh, uh, Dutch? Dutch, yeah, yeah that's that's talks about his girlfriend, right? right? Yeah. But like, if you go to Red Dead's website and look at like the wallpapers they made for the game, she has her own wallpaper with like a quote on it and everything because there is a story that you can yeah. get into. You can get to know her. Did you guys talk to her when she would stop you? Yeah. Okay, I did too. Like Every I time. Would, uh, Sometimes I felt bad. I brush her. None off of us a lot. ever hit not now. Is what? Oh, no, I, I never. Did. I, did I never hit not now. But there are shut a up, lot Reverend of Swanson. There are a lot of characters that will approach you, <laughs> but you can that. also go and approach them. Yeah. And randomly, sometimes it's just like, "How you doing, Arthur?" But other times it's like, "Man, Arthur, let me tell you this story about this thing I did when I was young." It's just like, "Oh shit, this is that was fun little story time with Uncle, right?" Yeah. But like, otherwise you wouldn't have gotten that if you didn't just happen to go talk to him in the camp. And I loved that. I yeah. loved the fact that. I spent more time in camp than I like to admit because ultimately I would finish these missions and just go, well, I'm going to go into the camp, talk to people, sing songs at a campfire, eat food, do some inventory management. Like, yeah, there was something about the camp that felt like home. Uh, huh. I, I have to say, though, there was only one thing in camp that was a little disjointing sometimes, which was when a character would invite you to sit down with them. And said, like, what's going on with you, Arthur? Tell me a little about what was happening. And my Arthur was fairly a good person. Like, I did not go full red hat in, in the game. But he'd be there and be like, I've just been killing people for no reason, beating on women. And I'm like, I beat one woman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that but really you're, stuck with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. it, really, it really stuck in your character's my, mind. I know a lot of, that's a lot of, like, uh, negative reviews about it. It's like, oh, I can't really be white hat in this. I'm like, no, I think you can, because yeah. I play this full red hat. Uh, when you're white, it's more like you are, rem you're like remorseful for your actions. You're, you're doing trying. Them. You're trying, but you're, you're not a good you man. Know. He says it over and yeah, over. Arthur has been good. in this gang since he was 13. This is all he knows. He has been groomed for this. He is literally a child soldier. Like he is, he is a child soldier yeah. whose entire ideology is 
Dutch knows what he's doing. Yeah. Right? Like that's Whatever he it. says. So goes. it's like a weird cult of personality around. Yes. Yeah. It's, like he he I think the line literally even is that like w- growing up, the only thing that mattered to me was loyalty. That was it. That's all Arthur cared about. That was the only thing that that uh, like tethered him to this world was loyalty to Dutch and loyalty to the So plan. when they were building this, the main role the whole writing team had was Dutch always viewed himself less a criminal and more someone fighting back against a corrupt system of power. Oh, yeah. So the world is corrupt. The United States government's corrupt. And that's why Dutch, like, Empathize the the great missions with the Native Americans in this game. Yep. Like it's amazing. Like, oh, there's game. missions with Native Americans. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. If yes. you fucking played oh, the yeah. game, I was like, you God piece damn it, of I thought you were trolling me. No, no, no. I I, I played the oh, yeah. tutorial. Yes, he and exploits one the Native Americans because yes. he knows that they'll fight for him. But he does it by saying like, "Don't you want your land back?" Yeah. Ooh, dark. Yeah. Yeah. The Ooh. game goes to very dark There's places, also, Brett. There's uh, also black characters in the gang. There's Native American characters in the gang. There's yep. also I've encountered them yeah. in the tutorial that I played. He only played Chapter uh, 1, which is why he thinks it's boring, because the snow level is kind of yeah, boring. Yeah, it is boring. It's but sl- it tells once you the world down. opens up and you can go, once you're free to roam, that game is just a fucking masterpiece. I, yeah. I know we're in the podcast here, but I am going to say it again. It is the most amazing, emotional, immersive story experience i have ever had in any medium really book included book included yeah. really it it is yeah. one of the greatest stories i think i've ever encountered i mean i definitely i could i could lower it in the list if, if you gave me some more time to reflect on things like dune and stuff like that but it, it i have never encountered something like this at least in a video game um, that has br- brought me just an emotional response well, huh. like a pure emotional here's, response here's i've been thinking about this and why that is there are so many games that use the moral tree thing as like the like this is how you get the player to feel like they're the character. Yeah. Right? right? That's what they're aiming for. But I'm gonna be completely honest, I never felt like Shepard. I was never Shepard in the Mass Effect well, series. In fairness, Shepard's options are between nice guy and dickhead. Sure. Yeah. Like but, that's your full range. Agree or but, slap. But, yeah. Agree or slap. <laughs> but what I mean is all these games that do try to make you feel immersed in a character, it's not that they failed at it, but they did the best they could at the time. And with, like, as any game company goes, a lot of them don't put all this energy into story. But, like, as Vic yeah. was saying, they put years into that first. Yeah. First and they was kept story. writing till the very end. Like, and half so, the delay is from like, that. like, when you're in Arthur Morgan's head and you're making these decisions, a lot of them aren't things where it's like, do the good thing or do the bad thing. Do the good thing, do the bad thing. It's just what you're doing. Two decisions. Right? It's just the decisions you're making. It's your every decisions, almost like your real life, where you can choose to cut someone off or not. Right. And that earns you something in a metric there that doesn't exist in the real world. But when you're in Arthur's head, you genuinely feel like you are Arthur and you're trying to steer a narrative that you already know. You know where it's going. You know where the end of the line is. And so all you're doing is laying tracks the best way you can. I also love that from the get go, Arthur is like, man, that we were a smaller gang. The West is like, romanticized in this way of like we knew exactly what we we're going for but it's like that weird realization of like fuck man i am old and we've been talking about the same thing every single time and this last thing that went down in blackwater is it's it's a loop like he's realizing holy shit i'm in it like it's just a continuing loop of the same actions over and over again and we- I, I think that i think that brings us back to your question about dutch yeah um which is it, it, this countercultural figure um would really what what you're watching is the descent of a cult of personality into his own madness. Yeah. Right. The, the, a man that has started to believe in the smell of his own shit. Um, and and it's I think it's an amazing kind of character to create because in the first Red Dead, um, they they hint at it, but really he's just gone by the point that yeah, you get to. He's him, yeah. Right? Crazy madman when you um, get to him in the first. Yeah. One. Bill Williamson is a more compelling antagonist. Yeah. than yeah. Dutch in in Red Dead One. But in in Red Dead Two, what what you're meeting is a man who is a product of his time in that he is being shoved out of it. Yeah. It's Al Swearingen if he didn't have a bar to own. Interesting. Okay, yeah. that makes sense to me. I don't <laughs> know what the hell you're talking about. The, right. That was a Deadwood uh, <laughs> reference. Al yeah. Swearingen and Dutch are very similar, uh, it, but it, like it, in the same way as both horrible people who genuinely believe, though, that they are doing it for the best interest of everyone there. Yeah. And so that's what's really fascinating about Deadwood is Al Swearingen is, for all intents and perf- purposes, a mafia boss, mm-hmm. right? For, for like, literally, he runs drugs, he's stealing land, he mm-hmm. kills people, he's takes gun their runner. gold, yeah. Yeah. but he uh, is doing it because he's trying to provide a better life for the people in his town. Mm-hmm. It, Dutch, Dutch is interesting uh, in the fact that it is a man that's looking at 
a cultural, a technological, uh, a, a political change yeah. in everything that he's known to be true, right? And he's watched it slowly occur where he says, well, we got to fight against this and create create our own world where, where what makes sense to us continues. And he's coming to a conclusion that that's never going to happen. What's his goal? Is it to go somewhere where they can have Tahiti. their own home? Tahiti! The goal, so, so the goal, the is goal. I, as, as it makes clear, is, is to eventually basically make it far enough west that they can get some land, build a life for everybody in the camp mm-hmm. um, and and just live a normal life like basically his narrative is that they, they do these awful things to get money and they're going to buy land out west and stay far away from civilization so they can and be their just, own and do they, whatever yeah, they want there's always this they have their own system of laws of, and yeah and, and there's historical precedence for that too right. there, there's yeah, in American expansionism I'm sure that that's a, a not an uncommon story line. absolutely being yeah. in a gang and, and and using that to provide you the income you need to live a moral life following it is something that happened like that's 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 part of a story of America yeah um so so what does it mean when you can't when you can't manage it anymore and you start to have dreams of like running away to the Caribbean to solve those those issues oh uh, you're just displacing where you ultimately end up to a different place right he's, yeah. he's, he's creating fantasy lands yeah as he's basically the acknowledged leader of a, a, a couple dozen human beings well and that's why the Guarma chapter the the chapter yeah. five the beginning of chapter five in Guarma is so perfect. Because earlier on, Guarma was on the list of maybe a place we can go. Yeah. And upon seeing it as being the outlaws there, they're basically just like, well, this is just as, if not more so, fucked. Like, mm-hmm. this this could yeah. never work. And that's like Arthur's moment of this this plan isn't going to work. Like, yeah. Tahiti's going to be the same shit. Does he start questioning Dutch later in all this? All these questions. Oh, all the this game. doubt. Have doubt. a little faith, Arthur. Yeah, the game almost starts out with that because he's like, "What now?" Because he wasn't apparently he missed most of the action of what happened at Blackwater. So basically, oh, so he doesn't really this game know. On the run, and they're in the mountains running from the Pinkertons because something went horribly wrong on their last heist. Something went real bad on a river, real bad. on a river ferry, yeah. and you uh, never find out. No, huh. you yeah. never. All you know is that a girl died. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And you know her name, uh, and you know that it was a bullet through the head. But that is well. It. No, no, that's Jenny. No, you know that because of Red Dead One. Uh, uh, that's the, right. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the stranger, the, yeah, the stranger, the, the, the Grim st- Reaper of the Red Dead World, basically yeah. talks to you about the girl who died on the ferry boat. Yeah, man. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, they yeah. tie that in too. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, all of that. So it's it's all very t- like. The, the joke in the beginning was like, okay, yeah, Arthur's such an important character, then why the fuck was he never mentioned in Red Dead 1? But ultimately, I kind of get it. Like, John left all of it behind, right? Yeah. Like, I, I, John truly left all of it behind. It's not that Arthur, you know, doesn't exist to him, but, like, obviously when they made the game, he didn't exist. He wasn't a character yeah. that they were going to talk about, mm-hmm. but it still made sense. Like, when you're done with it all, you're like, yeah. yeah, I get why John wouldn't talk about any of it. I do love the way, like, I know people complain about the snow level and then the, the post-log, like, the epilogue and everything. I love that the game confines you at certain points because it makes you really struggle and slow down a bit. Like, being in the snow, learning how to hunt, get all the controls. Because if you just started in the camp as, like, go out, you would just, I, I'm all right, I'm going to go hunt. And it I'm would like, be, like, elite dangerous. Yeah. And you're just like, what the fuck am I doing? These controls yeah. make no sense. And, and I did think, you know, as, as I, I've heard people shit on the epilogue a little bit, too. Um, but playing as John again was great. Oh, it was, it was great. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, and, and it is beautiful to kind of see the, the, the last parts of that story and how they tie together. Um, but I will agree, uh, Dan's wife uh, and I were talking about this. Um, they will make fucking money by giving me a Sadie Adler yes. DLC. 100%. Yes. Let me play as fucking Sadie. Let me play as Sadie. Let me play. You know what? Drop one with Sadie. Make it a good few missions. Yeah. I don't care where you set it. Uh, give me something like in the year before John shows back up. And then yeah. give me a Charles DLC. Doesn't have to be as big. Just a little yeah. bit. But I wanted to. Yeah. But that's amazing about this game is that side characters were so impactful. Like oh, yeah. Sadie's whole story is you save her from the Adriscals, uh, who basically murdered her husband. And he got to that part. That's snow level. Assu- yeah. And, and I just blame the audience. Thing. Like basically. Almost I killed, gets raped by was, Micah. Yeah. Killed the yeah. shit out of those was guys. was probably raped by the Adriscals. You yeah, know so what? In other words, yeah. Micah, good guy, right? Shut Micah's up. a big piece of shit. Um, <laughs> that, that was one of my favorite parts is uh, I, so I took way too long to play this game. Yeah. And, and everybody's on like chapter four and I'm on chapter like two. 
Um, and they're like, please finish it so we can talk about what is happening. Uh, and there's a scene in the game where Micah just fucking straight up murders someone in a house. And I just go, oh, Micah did a bad thing. Yeah. And the response was like, yeah, that could be the title of this game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think my first reaction to Micah was in that, it, like, when he's approaching Sadie and being real creepy, and we're in voice chat, yeah. and I just go, I got a bad feeling about this yeah, Micah that's guy. Yeah, <laughs> that's the whole time. No, I mean, I didn't think so until you break him out of jail, and his uh, reaction is, let's murder everyone in this town. Yeah. Because These someone people has took my, my pistols, and yes. I want them back. I'm back. That is his justification. He kills everyone in Strawberry. Oh, wow. Whole Dark. town. Whole town. <laughs> Just rides Super through dark. killing everybody. Yep. Does he get him back? I mean, yeah, he gets his pistols gets, back. Okay, and then he teaches back. you how to dual wield, so yeah. it's all worth it, I guess. <laughs> nice. So he had a it works game out for you. Gameplay mechanic out of it. Exactly. Yeah. It was it was it was great in like that, that regard. I think the the all the dialogue is what makes this game special because that whole time it's going on, it's not like you're a basic like any other game would be basic NPC noises of just like mm-hmm. Arthur be like, ha, gotcha. He's no, he's like, God damn it, Micah, what the what are we in? Like he is upset frantic yep. like it's not it actually makes you like oh fuck he's like god that like that's his whole thing is like ah, someone did something stupid and now he's the big brother of the whole gang and again hmm. the only Saving thing that matters to him time. is loyalty so he doesn't like micah yeah but, but he, he doesn't want to see a member obligated. of his gang get, get killed, killed. yeah he has to do it and that's well, what he does he was kind of ready to let him sit in jail sure he sure, sure sure but, but he knew dutch that when dutch told him, him to go he, had to yeah. he was gonna go yeah. well and that that brings you back to dutch is you know what what happens to a group of people when you give someone ultimate power in that way when they yeah. when they've been trustworthy every time before and have gotten that you, you got up every single scrape and now they're not well he picks up people when they're down he picks yeah. up people when they've been yeah. attacked or he's not yeah he's not recruiting people who are well off no Right, like everyone he's, he's picked up is either abandoned child or someone of being criminals. Like, yeah, criminals. Uh, Jose is uh, like Mexican. Like anyone that's being attacked by other people from discrimination, he like seems as someone. Jose wasn't up. Mexican. Not Jose. Um, oh, Javier? Javier. Javier. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I was gonna Javier, say Jose sorry. was yeah. Jose was Jose Dutch's was balance, member, right? Yeah. Like Jose was the only one who balanced out Dutch. Yeah, because he was the only one who called Dutch on his shit, and Dutch hated it, yeah. but listened. Right, like that was there, and that element was there, and it's when Hosea is gone, and Dutch loses that moral compass, and Hosea yep. and him share the same greed. They will both be like, "Ah, oh, this is fucking stupid," but there's a score. Let's exactly do they both share that greed. Yeah, 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 they're both greedy. They both yeah. they both want to be outlaws. Like Hosea's yeah. not longing for a life no, away from. He's this. gonna die in this. He loves being in the gang. Well, no, you're you're absolutely it's a family. Right. Yeah, the the Lemoyne Bank uh, robbery and the trip to Guama is definitely where you turn from. Like, hey, what's going on with Dutch to, oh, no, something's wrong with Dutch. Something's wrong. Something's seriously and significantly yeah. wrong with Dutch. Um, what was the line? Are you going to strangle me too? Like, it, Ooh, yeah. It's, mm. it's, a, it's, it's a really intense uh, process to watch someone lose complete faith in someone that they had complete faith in. Yeah. And that's, yeah. And that's what we're watching that whole time. Because the game starts with Arthur's faith is firmly planted in Dutch. And he looks at John as like a little brother, but his dumb little brother who can't do anything right. And yeah. he, he thinks of him as a fuck up. As the game goes on, it changes to Dutch is a fuck up. Yep. And he needs to be stopped or like like something needs to be done. John is the only chance of sanity and life in this. Yeah. And yeah. he needs to be protected. Like you literally watch that shift happen. Yeah. Mm. But I mean, if, if we want to go back to talking about dialogue, um, I, I've said it before to you guys and I, I will say it again. Uh, the ghost line is probably the most intense line. Oh, in. with Sadie. Oh, uh, it, yeah. It's such a it, like, such a beautiful line. So for for uh, those of you who remember, it is the scene where uh, uh, Arthur is trying to get Sadie to agree. If he goes and helps her kill these people that she has a blood vengeance against, uh, the 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 remaining of Driscolls, will she make sure that John gets out because he's the last la- like the last hope? Yeah. And it's that line where he says, um, "Sadie, you and me, we're more ghosts than people." Yeah. And uh, I don't I don't know how that one's not going to stick with me for like a while. That's a yeah. very powerful line of dialogue. Yeah, and this is after he's realized that he has uh spoilers tuberculosis. So yep. he's dying. Oh, he's... I think we're well past spoilers. I, yeah, I don't think again. you have yeah. to yeah. tag that. But either anymore. way, like um so he he finds that out in that moment of the game I was like motherfuckers. Like 
It's chapter. Is it chapter four? Chapter you find five. That? No, chapter, chapter five. five. Right after Guarma. Chapter five. Right you, after you all find the this out, and your character has kind of a couple times like coughed up, and then once it was blood. So you get a little hint that something's not right. But when he finds out in that moment, it's so to me it was so powerful because it's like, oh, this is a person that thinks he's gonna die a violent death. No, it's uh, you're going out with TB. Like that's he's gonna die of an illness. Yeah, you're gonna die of an illness. I mean, he does die a violent death, but it's more like well, yours did. Mine Mine died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very true. Mine. uh, mine You got stabbed by Micah. I got Uh, to rest on a ridge and watch the sunset. No, mine was yelling at Dutch. Nice, very much Uh, nice. (laughs) My part that I did like a lot. You get the money in my ending, and you find out you could have fucking bought a state. Because oh, yeah. Dutch was hoarding forty grand in that time. Yep. Dutch wow. had a lot 40 of forty grand money. was from Blackwater and everything, and they could have been way well off. Like all of them could have lived like fucking kings. If Dutch had just, all he had to do was send Sadie into Blackwater. And yeah, they didn't she, know who Sadie was. She could have literally picked up the money, and they would have been fine. Yep. Like and that would have been the end of the game. And it was yeah, a let's very see. Forty thousand dollars in eighteen ninety nine. Seventeen trillion dollars. Uh, that is one million one hundred ninety five dollars. Easily could have gotten the yeah. group to fucking Tahiti. They were millionaires. Yes. Yeah. Unbeknownst to the entire clan. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Because that's Dutch's hoarding, and yet I'm the one who gets yelled at for not putting shit in the fucking <laughs> that is uh, the metal box thing. because I was being hung up by the O'Driscolls and tortured. You stupid bitch! I wish someone would have called it out during the play test. Be like, hey, maybe not happen. Like, I get kidnapped, tortured, come back to camp. The first thing Dutch does to me at the camp is like, hey. Uh, Arthur, you haven't really chipped in much. I really am counting on you. And I'm like, motherfucker, I just got back. I have a beard, a ZZ Top beard, and I have scars. I look like I have just came out of a tournament camp. Like, no, it's fine. I'll, I'll go get money. Yeah, <laughs> let me give you this nickel I have in my pocket, you piece <laughs> of shit. Maybe I, I should I play had, this. Yeah, you yes, should. you should. I had the same thing with Susan Grimshaw, where I forgot what mission it was, but I came back Ms. to Ms. camp. Miss Grimshaw. Miss Grimshaw. Grimshaw. And she goes, Arthur, you haven't been contributing. I'm like, I have a gold bar, you... <laughs> bitch <laughs> like that's what I'm, i i haven't gotten to the thing I'm yet to, to deposit this. is that like, enough like, for literally you, the your gold hand bar? is hovering yeah. over the box about to drop it in <laughs> that has happened to me before <laughs> Arthur, i noticed you haven't been contributing i i just finished putting I, items in i just okay. i just did I, I gave a dollar and then you look at the log you're the one that spoiled that for me oh you can see what everyone contributes Two dollars 25 cents a nickel here yeah there, fucking like, sean who gave me shit <laughs> once and i look and it's like after a big score where you literally, uh, the dialogue is you reminding him, like, don't forget, yeah. you got to put some of that, di- some of it goes back to the camp. Oh, yeah, I know, of course it does. Yeah, of course they ride off. You go and look, he contributes a dollar. I'm like, motherfucker, I got $100 for that quest. <laughs> I know you have money. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. Oh, you contributed feathers? <laughs> Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> I was just thinking the camp needed those. Well, yeah, I went duck hunting. I kept the meat. I, but I figured you guys might like these feathers. They're very pretty. I kind of feel bad nice. right now because this, this uh, conversation is stripping everything away from this game that would be like, no, a, oh, a, I don't care. It, for, it, for, I really for you. Don't care. Really and for the, <laughs> for so the dumbass who kept so listening after the warning. Narrative is amazing. Go play it. Absolutely. What did you guys do in your free time in this game? That's what I want to open it up to right oh, here. Oh, man. Like, Explore. Some, yeah. I mean, yeah. everything was about exploration. So uh, the reason this actually this game does tie in to uh, some of our format a little bit uh, yeah. because there are things to find in this that are steeped in Americana. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And like, so for example, one of the ones I found that later when watching online, I didn't realize this is what they were going for, but you can find La Llorona, which I think we talked about in one of our episodes. It is a, 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 a witch, a ghost of a witch, essentially. Yeah. Who is often found crying at riverbanks? This is more of Mexican folklore. Oh, the Mexican yeah. folklore yep. ghost. Oh, that's cool. Uh, but she cries at riverbanks, and if anyone offers to help her, because she's looking for her children that she killed, yeah. if anyone ever offers to help her, if you see her crying and you offer to help her, she tries to kill you or will give you bad luck. That's the legend. Mm-hmm. And in the game, there is a woman that you can find crying by a river. She is all in white. Her skin is pallid and completely just like there's no color to it. Yeah. And if you that, an option comes up to help. No dialogue options. There is a, uh, an option to help. And if you click help, she immediately slashes at you with a knife that does serious fucking damage. And then you are chased through the woods by what looks like zombies. Oh, wow. whoa. So, like, that I did is not encounter any of that. I did not. Either. That is something you can find randomly in the woods. But then also you can find ghosts in the woods. Like, there is a ghost 
in the woods that it will tell you different stories about how she died. That is just yeah. something you can huh. come across. There are UFOs in the game yeah. no that shit. you can come yeah. across. I'm pretty sure I found a Bigfoot skeleton or a giant. There is yeah. a Sasquatch yeah. skeleton, yeah. and there is a Sasquatch trapped in a cage, or in yeah. a cave. There is a time traveler who asks you to go get rock carvings. And Spoiler to anyone who hasn't finished this side. I haven't finished that. Uh, yeah, that is never be a spoiler. Yeah, no, 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 spoiler for me. It's okay, fine. we've ruined this entire yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. When you, when you collect them all and you go back to get your money... You are met by a woman who comes into the cabin, and you're like, oh, I'm looking for your husband. She's like, well, my husband died years ago, and she's holding a, a redheaded baby with a birthmark. And when you're like, oh, well, your husband, and you say the name, I can't remember the name. She goes, yeah. that wasn't my husband's name. That's my baby's name. And so you find out that the person that gave you the quest, who is talking in a weird dialect that sounds like the like 1920s. Oh, yeah, because oh, he's doing yeah. the, like, Gemini. Yeah, I'm on the up and up, fella. <laughs> Like, yeah, he's talking like he's from the 1920s. Oh, that's amazing. That is the baby that she's holding. So that's cool. Oh, that's, that's a really time cool. travel thing. And there's a huge mural on the wall of all the sketches that looks like him, like, traveling through time. So that's crazy. there's all of this shit just that you can find just by exploring, right? Yeah. Like, so that's where my free time went, was just trying to find It's also the vampire in saint I, Who will not show up for me. Yeah, I have not, found, I have not even I have I found, found him either. I all tried. his poems yeah. I have marked on a map, like literally in my journal, it shows like, this is where he is. The most... And he will not show up. Creepy thing I ran into was the serial killer. I saw him finish yeah, that. Yeah, serial killer I was... Finished that. Like, it is... Fuck God. When you find his hovel, it yeah. is fucking... Ugh. Uh, it, it, it's. I won't spoil that one. On you guys again? should. It's like a like. It's not witness me. It's something else, right? I think it was find me, if I recall. Uh, uh, no, it, it is something like blood. witness oh, my yeah. witness my works. Yeah, yeah, something, yeah. Like, something yeah, like that. It's, it's he writes something like that at all. Oh, sorry, the, the back scenes. of his map says find me. That's oh, what I think is what it is. Max, yeah, literally, you'll just find a the top of a corpse, like no head, just hanging. Huh. Somewhere blood Strung up on a bridge, and then someone's head piked into the wall. Oh, that's cool. With literally like a map in their mouth. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I yep. should probably play this single player. You you really should. Yeah, I, I'm glad. At least until online gives you more to do. Well, I've yeah. I've kind of gotten everything I want out of the online experience for right now. Yeah, and then when they release more, we can jump back to online. But you should really give the, the single player, you're doing, player a chance. It's great in single player because the camp benefits from it, and you get the rewards of that. Like, and you can, can make outfits out of it, yeah. which you can't in online. Mm. So as far as um what what I did in this game, like outside the storyline, um was absolutely explore. Um, yeah. I I definitely had a, a sojourn at one point where i just wandered off into the wilderness and just hunted and survived that way and like came back with this giant beard uh and i did appreciate when i went back to camp that i was like oh it's a video game they're just gonna be like there's your next mission arthur and instead they were like where have you been yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah or they'll um, tell you to get a haircut like yeah. be people be like what if, like you need to trim that up but just the stuff to discover in this game there's there's been um there's one thing that will was awesome which is i i think i told you guys about which is i found the feral man um, so it's just this. I just oh, run yeah. across this. Oh yeah, I found him. Yeah, yep, this naked dude in yep. the middle of the woods, and he's just like, rah, 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 rah. and I'm like, oh, oh, oh okay. Um, so I lasso and capture him, <laughs> right? Because I got like, him. I got him. I was like, <laughs> I got to figure out what he is. You can't talk to him or anything. It just captures him. And at that moment, two wolves jet yeah. out of the woods and attack you. So I murder both of the wolves because obviously you do. Monster. Instantly get red hat points because yeah. I have just murdered this man's family yep. apparently. Yeah. Oh my god! I, I was ran into by wolves. Yeah. <laughs> I, I ran into him because he howled. And I was like, "Is there a fucking werewolf in this game?" And then he's just running with this pack of wolves next to him, and I was just like, "What?" I, I didn't know what to do, and I tried to lasso him, but then the, his wolves attacked and killed yeah, my horse. Yeah, I, I cut him loose, and he just ran away, looking yeah. back at me. It was so sad. Um, but there have been two moments in this game um, that I have actually had to put the controller down and walk away. Both, <laughs> both relating, not for, for anger, but both relating to the fact that I have a little child. I have a five-year-old. Oh, yeah. Um, one is I came across a cabin with two children's corpses in it. Oh, fuck. Um, locked, like padlocked, completely locked down. I had to break into the house. And in that house, you find a letter from their mother telling them she's only going to be gone four days. She's going to go back and get the money back from the men who stole it from them. So please study your letters. She'll be back. Don't answer the door for anyone who knocks. No. And don't go out of the house. Oh. And it's just their two little desecrated That's corpses. Awful. I never found that. And oh, I, dark. yeah, that was one where I was like, and we're done tonight. That's kind of like the Saint of All Killers storyline in Preacher. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the, the second one was, uh, did anybody encounter the the gunsmith in Rhodes and his yes. little secret? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. 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 So the, the gunsmith in Rhodes and his story about how he lost his son. 
Um, so he basically tells you, like, you, you find he's captured just some guy that looks like his kid. Yeah. And the guy's like, help me, mister. He's got me in a sailor outfit. Chained to oh, a bed. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a very weird and uh, actually kind of comical in a yeah, weird way. It's very yeah. funny when you first Until yeah. the, the gunsmith tells the story. I was the same way where I was like, man, this is all. We-. And then he told the story. I'm like. All right, everyone can go here. Yeah, let's it, all just let's just go our separate ways. Uh, it's it's basically we? the story of how he was hunting with his son, showing him how to shoot a rifle, and the rifle kicks back, and his son falls into the river, and he couldn't find him. He couldn't catch up to him, and he just never found him again. Oh, God. yeah. To Dark. me, to me, it was the homeless guy that told you, "Oh, they took away everything. My family abandoned me. All this stuff. Can you go get a couple of my belongings? Because oh, yeah. the bank took my house. You go to his house. It's completely disheveled and everything, and you find." In the basement and in his journals, he was a slave master. Not a master, I'm sorry. He was, he was a slave catcher. Catcher. Slave catcher. Oh, slave shit. catcher. And got joy. He's like, I just had respect for what I did. And you catch these notes and letters from family members like, don't ever talk to us again. All this other stuff because of what he did. He's like, I just had respect in what I did. And there's a place and everything. And you realize you're like, so you go back to town, you give him the shit. I fucking put a bullet in his head. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I, sc- I, I tied him up and threw him on the fire. Because he gives, he gives you shit. He and he's like, no, shit. I did it. Because I had, I had pride in what I did and blah, blah, blah. He's like, this world's all fucked up. Because this is right after the Civil right. War. Yeah. Um, so this guy is completely just lost in his ways in that. And um, we have to talk about the Klansmen in this game. Oh, the Klansmen because are the best. Because they're all so over good. the woods in this game. And the funny thing is, so I'm about to attack one of my wife's like, no, no, watch. I'm like, wait, why? why? They're about to. So a new appointed member is being inducted. It's a full circle. There's a cross there. And I'm like, I hate this. And he sets the cross on fire and they put the hood on. And he's like bouncing up and down. She's like, just watch. I don't know where his hood catches on fire. <laughs> and then he grabs one of the other guys and their hood catches on fire. And they all scramble. And another time I walked into them, it's two of them trying to put up the cross, like setting it up. That's how I love this game so much because there's these random things. They're trying to put it up and one of the wizards in all black is behind them and they're like struggling. And she's like, nope, just watch. I'm like, all right, fine. This one was way more worth it. They're trying to put up the cross and they one of them buckles and it crushes all oh, of God. them and they're like alive under the cross though. <laughs> that um, is the, you don't lose points for killing them. You either. do not. No. The best part about the one where the guys catch on fire and they all run away if you follow the guys who ran away, because I did, they run off a cliff face. Oh, really? <laughs> That's amazing. I didn't know that. That's amazing. Even better. That um, is fantastic. So I, I think that um, that kind of brings to a, to an interesting point, which is this game really well... Um, I mean, obviously, there are incredibly fictionalized uh, yeah. concepts. Like, the, the fact that nothing is named after the real world. You know, you find um, um, Theodore Roosevelt's uh, uh, image in the game or news story about him, but he's Senator Thaddeus Waxman yeah. and stuff like this. But they do an amazing job um, concentrating and, and, and distilling the concept of the American West, you know, just a few decades after the Civil War. Yeah. Um, because you constantly meet, like, old soldiers from the Civil War mm-hmm. that have the limb missing. Um, oh, that, yeah, that, that's true. Um, yeah. You know, they're in poverty like many of the soldiers were following the Civil War. Um, you that's have what Rhodes was. It was like a southern town that just yeah. never gets rebuilt, basically. Yeah, really? That's, that's yeah. one of my favorite quotes when they talk about the Braithways, because you have this this uh, uh, these two warring families in this yeah. one area of town. Habsburg um, and McCoys, but not yeah. at all. Yeah. The yeah, the is there like a take on that? No, because they're like plantation-owning families. It, it's, yeah. way more, oh, okay. um, it's way more uh, Montesquieu and... Um, Capulet. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they, uh, they okay. were, they were. You, you could tell that pre Civil War they were like Southern royalty. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there's a great line in it where they're like, "Yeah, the Braithwaites had a much better time until some changes in the local labor or labor laws." Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> I love that scene because Lenny, you ride with him, who's mm-hmm. black in the game, and uh, I love it because Arthur doesn't have any prejudice, but he's like, he's like, "Yeah, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't feel safe riding around here without you, Arthur." He's like, "What? Why is that?" And he's like. Cause, and he goes into, like, why he can't go to certain places. And, like, when they get in trouble, he's almost gotten lynched twice Jeez. in this game. Yeah, while the other ones get arrested. Yeah. He, <laughs> they he, would, he would be in trouble. Him. Lynch him, Jesus yeah, Christ. immediately. But uh, th- this game so well touches on things like the treatment of Native American tribes yeah. and how the government fucks with them. 
just because they have stuff they want under the land that right. they just signed a treaty with. Um, the the suffragette movement is a major portion oh, of this yeah, game. Really? Yeah. Um, I didn't realize that was in there. Yeah, there's absolutely. a lot to this single player. Um, the American industrialist, like yep. as a concept, yep. is an actual is, villain. Is like, a villain. Yeah. Is the, is almost the main villain to an extent until yeah. you realize it's fucking Dutch. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> in one of the chapters we go to Saint Denis is like, there it is, Arthur, a big city, and it's just like dark music on a factory. <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, it's nice. Um, but I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, what what was his name in the game? I, I lost a Cornwall. Um, you know, oh, yeah. Cornwall is he has his fingers in everything, including Guarma when you finally get to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so th- this game does an amazing, amazing job at giving you this weird little alternate snapshot of of 1899 America and what it is to go through that. And it made me think a lot while I was playing it about something Dan originally talked about, which was the movie Forrest Gump. Um, and so you you had made a, a, a supposition that basically Forrest Gump is really the story of America. From yes. About the oh, 50s it, to the that 80s. was basically my, yeah. a, a capstone essay I had to write in film school. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. Well, that's a really interesting uh, way of viewing it. Because well, so I had I to get that. I had to defend it a lot because it was specifically around docudramas, right, and they yeah. wanted us to write about a docudrama. Mm-hmm. And I I basically asserted that Forrest Gump was a docudrama. Uh, to which the professor, Bold claim, I'm sure, the <laughs> professor of course is like, no, it isn't. Forrest Gump wasn't real. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not talking about Forrest Gump. I'm talking about him as the avatar all for that. the American, like, oh, yeah. like the American Arcana. experience. Experience. Yeah, because he goes through all like, these different experiences, right? He and literally shows like, us what, like, it's a it's a history lesson yeah. in the film. Yeah, like, that's what it is. That's cool. So like Forrest Gump, yeah, he didn't exist, but all the shit he came across. Did. Yeah, all of that stuff what, like yeah. did happen exactly, and and the same thing uh, in a much much more abstract way is true in this game. Yeah, um, you deal with the the advent of technology and the changes that occur. Um, you know, you you meet this crazy professor who is basically Tesla, um, and it gives you a flavor yeah, of his, that that yeah, yeah that change in technology um, and how they're how they're dealing with it. I so, could I could not imagine what it would be like to be in a place where like you have you grew up with like horsepower like literal horsepower and then having electricity or gas light yeah. being introduced to you and like i'm sure that this is the same time period where all these things oh, are yeah. starting to happen yeah, you're, yeah i mean you're looking yeah. at turn of the century yeah. you know edison the car is what a few years away the the airplane's seven years away um, well you can find a crashed airplane or no three years away actually really you, you can find a crash yeah, uh, yeah. like uh, There's a hot air balloon no 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 no, no. Right. well there is a hot yeah. air balloon yes yeah. But is there? You can find a crashed, right uh, crashed airplane with a dead, uh, dead pilot in it That's because amazing. they failed their experiment. So oh, wow. I think I think the 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 uh, the champion of this game or, or or the the victory of this game more than anything else is really their ability to bring that time and feeling to the player. Yeah. Um. While mixing in this incredible story of the yeah. redemption of one man. Man, my online only experience is so radically different <laughs> than anything you guys have discussed Because online here. doesn't have any of it that. Doesn't have it's any all of up it. here. It's and it. Guys on that are listening to this, I'm tapping on the side of my head. I know that's <laughs> bad radio, but the head cannon that I have in my online experience sure, you is have, fascinating. You, you have a beautiful head cannon of what you're doing in that world and who you are, and that's fine, but then the world gives you nothing to do. That's my point. That's that's my big gripe with online is yeah. I enjoy it. I enjoy it for riding around with you guys and fighting people and having fun, but that is like candy, whereas the the single player was a full meal. Hmm. You see, Brett. You see how when we start talking about the multiplayer, now we're talking about video games, right? Yeah. And before we're talking about like storytelling nature of America, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I can see the depth that you guys have experienced versus the depth that I have experienced. Play this game, like, you there's, dumb bastard. There's, there's a, a mission in this game that terrified me, and I played it way too late at night, which is where you're hunt, you're helping him get his boat back for the gators in the swamp. Oh, yeah. And you're having us like just like like in water to your waist deep and you're just like I don't know something's out there and there's a giant ass gator <laughs> that literally <laughs> ate this dude's boat and he's stuck up in a tree and it is terrifying like this game has so many great things with the wilderness and the giant well, bear did, did you ever find the bear cabin no I didn't find that oh wait are you talking about the one that attacks you out of nowhere well, that's in a cabin. Oh no, I did not. So there is a amazing. cabin in what? the middle of the woods in the north part, like north of Annisburg. 
Uh, and it's just a cabin. So uh, if you've played the game enough, I think we all do the same thing where when you find a cabin in the middle of the woods, you're just you like, go into well, it. I'm going to go look at what's in this cabin. Let's yeah. go see who's there. And that's how you run into the incest couple, which is oh, a mistake. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, those guys uh, found the sheep fuckers that way. It's consensual. It is, but I mean, well, not the part they did to you. And but. then they drug you and uh, rob you and leave you in a ditch of corpses. But anyway, oh, um, dark. So uh, there's a cabin, and like you go to the door and it's locked, and you're just like, oh fuck, all right. And so uh, I did the same thing. I broke the lock, uh, and as soon as you open the door, it is a bear cut scene because there is a bear that got trapped in the cabin. Very clearly, <laughs> people probably a bear wandered into their home. And they probably were just like, oh, get the fuck out, lock the doors. Yeah. Like, we'll come back here we'll come in like back three to four weeks. Take care of this. <laughs> uh, but you go in and the bear just attacks you. Like, you have no chance to dead yeah. eye or shoot it. Like, you are just tackled and have to do like a fight with the bear. <laughs> and it is horrifying. Oh it is a God. terrible jump scare that also happened to me way too late at night. And I yeah. was just like, I'm done. I'm, I'm done, done with this game, this game for tonight. Yeah. This, is, this is a good stopping point. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about online, Brett. What's your headcanon? Yeah, what's it like to grief noobs? Uh, so <laughs> I I don't necessarily just grief noobs, but for those of you I that... I mean, I do. I do. I do a fair bit of that. My, the, my fascination with the game is the metagame mechanics of yeah. the game within the game, which is how does Brett effectively grief people better? And But you asked about my headcanon. Uh, for those of you um, that have not played this game online with me, my avatar is the largest uh, like African-American character that I could have created. And he looks shockingly like Michael Clark Duncan. His name is George Washington Freeman. And he is the punisher of all of Xbox racist community. <laughs> 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 to be fair, you say that, you just punish anybody yeah. fine. You do. I, I've had several experiences where other characters have not griefed me, and I leave them alone. But the moment that they grief me, they become a target. Uh, but that t- online community is horrible and toxic. <laughs> yeah. uh, every yeah. now and then, you do find uh, a, a wholesome person on there, and I've thoroughly enjoyed those. Uh, so George Washington Freeman dresses like a federal uh, Union officer, because in my head canon, he did serve in the Union Army. Uh, wears the federal blue trench coat. Uh, dr- I looked up some photos online of what an officer would wear wow. and uh, matched his costuming exactly to that. Uh, I drive or I ride the greatest white horse that I could find. You're basically Samuel L. Jackson in the Hateful Eight. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Got it. And uh, I spend most of my time uh, in the free roam, uh, just wandering around and exploring. There's obviously things that I would enjoy in the single player after hearing. Uh, everything that you guys have to his about. credit, Brett knows that game like a hunter knows his land. Like, <laughs> he will tell you, hey, you go this part of the map in the corner, there's raccoons, <laughs> there's possums, <laughs> there's gators, it, and there's certain birds. You can carry up to 10 of the small varmints and if uh-huh. you kill them. You can take those. Those are all 60 to 80 cents. Like, <laughs> literally told me the economy of how to trap and live in this world. From his experience, I'm incredibly online. wealthy on the on the online <laughs> version of this, which is apparently not something that is common for and most people. And he knows where to game. avoid other griefers to trade in your wares. Uh-huh. I have a whole a whole economy planned around how my online experience involving he trade has routes. a second life in this game. <laughs> so here, here's a question: I, it, it, I have not played a lot of the online. I, mm-hmm. I've literally made. Uh, the character from uh, Tombstone, the older guy with the... Yeah. Ah, Virgil. Yeah. Virgil. <laughs> yes, yes, my character's name is, in fact, Virgil. Yeah. Um, but I have not really dived into it. Is it the same map from the... the same exact map. It is the map. exact same map. Okay, so when you play the single player, you're basically able to like go in and go, ah, oh, yes, I know where to find that raccoon that they want. Like Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to translate. And then here's the added benefit of when you go to single player. It's the same map. But now all those different cabins in the wood have things to discover. Oh, that's and they're not yeah. just locked they're really filled, and filled yeah. with people. Yeah. Like there's yeah. actually things to do. Yeah, I've reached uh, exactly where I want to be in the online game because in games that are free roam like this, the fun for me is being able to decorate my online guy as exactly yeah. the way I want and to uh, cause trouble for other people because it is a deliciously fun time. This is why you liked Rust so much. I loved Rust because of the griefing. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I mean, that is griefing of the game. Yeah, yeah it's griefing the video game. Yeah. Well, but, pretty much. Uh, by the way, seeing as we've established two of the characters' names, my character's name is Gavin. I'm looking for my friend Nigel, so if anybody's <laughs> seen Nigel, please let me know. I haven't finished that. Can you find Gavin? Uh, there is no Gavin. 
There's, there's no, no. What do you mean? There's I think no Gavin. he's Gavin. No, he is not. He's not. Uh, so I watched a video online. Apparently, if you hog tie Nod- Nigel or kill him, because yeah. if you kill him, uh, he comes back anyway. Weird. Fun fact: He's one of the few characters you can't truly kill. Yeah. Why um, not? I don't know. That's that's why this is all fascinating. But uh, he has a letter from a friend back in England talking about like, oh, you. I hear you and Gavin are doing great over there. Yeah. So like, Gavin's a real person. Oh, okay. But there is no one in the credits credited for modeling Gavin, and there is no one in the credits for voicing <laughs> Gavin. So, so he's so not in the game. Oh. He's not in the game. He is likely just a dead character somewhere yeah. but no one has discovered a body named Gavin. I was really sad to find him seven years later in Blackwater. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> when he's, a black, he's just like his I can't even like, remember what he looks like. Uh, I've wasted my life. Yeah. I'm looking for him. <laughs> I don't know what he looks like. Yeah. Yep. Oh that sounds very sad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well there's a ton of this game where you're just like oh. Hmm. My character in the online complete white hat even though you may not <laughs> <laughs> you may not think so. I do not do the bad. Because apparently missions. hunting gets you white hat points which yeah, is that's dumb. Weird. Dumb. Mm-hmm. Uh, so y- you would say this is a fun multiplayer experience? Uh, for me, absolutely. For some people, I get why you would not want to play it because it seems like there's not much to do yet because it's still in beta. Okay, uh, yeah. But I view everything that I'm doing right now as preparing for the real game, uh, which is going to take <laughs> off hopefully <laughs> at the end of the month. But uh, it, it's it's microtransaction land, isn't it? I don't bother no, with microtransactions. Uh, not yet. They've given you enough like free gold if you've jumped in on the beta. Yeah, it there's... will become that, but it, it'll be all cosmetics. Yeah, exactly. No, like, it won't. No, 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 no it'll be like weapons. GTA. Never mind it'll the be weapons. like GTA. Yeah. You can break the game with money if you yeah. are willing to throw you money, and that's don't fine. Yeah. Really break it though in GTA because I I spent a god awful amount of time in GTA Five uh, online, and like the stuff that you can buy in that with like actual like microtransaction money is like properties and stuff, and like yeah, you can get a really nice car. But, like, the nice car, or in the analog of this game, the nice horse really isn't game You can still just steal the, yeah, that person's yeah, car. Yeah, exactly. Like, it still dies or can be exploded. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's just faster in the moment yeah, or looks yeah. flashier. It's slightly better. Also, I do apologize. Available. If you've been hogtied in uh, Blackwater and Rob, that is probably my little brother because he loves spending that time. Just being a common thief in that game. And oh if you, yeah, it's um, great. I love playing. And if here. you are hogtied, <laughs> if you have been hogtied, and then immediately someone throws dynamite underneath you as you're struggling to break free of the rope, I apologize. That's me, mm-hmm. <laughs> most likely. I haven't seen you there because I bought Elite Dangerous. Um, <laughs> well, you... that's all the time we have now. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll we'll just veer away from Elite Dangerous because that game's garbage. <laughs> um, so, anything else on Red Dead, guys? Do we have any? Uh, other takeaways? I mean, the, the only other thing that, that I was going to mention is, you know, I, you've been making fun of me for playing Elite Dangerous because you've friggin' despised it, and I, I think it's amazing because it's menu to the game with space. Um, but Menus in space. But you, you, you were yelling... You were yelling uh, about how it was such a pain in the ass to, to dock your ship in that game. And I was thinking about with Red Dead, there's a lot of immersion concepts in that game yeah. that, that are constant. Like, you have to brush your horse. You have to feed your horse. Not I enjoy doing though. that. You have to yeah, you do. You, you don't have, have to, to feed them and brush it. You don't really have to brush it. Yeah, but it's nice, and you should. You, you should, don't you should have be to. nice. In to the your game, horse. you have to. Look, uh, canonically speaking, George Washington Freeman's horse Shadow Facts needs to be brushed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you have a white horse, you have to brush that no matter all the time. Cause yeah, because it gets dirty. dirty. Not an online. It does. It does. Yeah, get dirty. yeah, but then yeah. you just like go to another area, call your horse back, and it's perfectly pristine. I like to brush my horse. I think that it is nice. Anyway. He so serves this, no, me well. This, this actually answered the <laughs> question is. that I had, which is like. Where on the immersion front for Red Dead is is there too much or too little? Because I've seen a lot of online stuff where like, oh, why do you have to do all this? Um, but it is clear that everyone here has kind of had a different experience with it, which has not really interrupted the game for them. I love the immersion mm-hmm. part of it, especially in the online, because I wasn't expecting that to be there. Red Dead Online has no immersion. Uh, you still have to eat. You still have to do all of your stat management. Or you management. just die, and when you come back, you're fine. No, you have a nerfed. Uh, everything is nerfed when you die. Sure, and so then you just drink a tonic, and you can then join well, you're the right. I temporary. Find, no, I, know, but I find it's more of a struggle, because in campaign, the problem is I looted everything. So, like, I would just use tonics left and right. Oh, yeah. And yeah, online, I am not. I am, like, it's very No, rust. you have to make it's your own like stuff shit. in online. Like, I don't have Deadeye. I'm not going to have Deadeye for, like, a good while. 
Because if you die, your rings don't like replenish yeah, your and your stamina. dead eye, de- de- it like deletes. Yeah, you'll when get. You die. It's easily to get all your stuff fatigued online versus in the campaign. I found personally. And you also have to maintain your horse because your horse fatigue carries over yeah. from like. It just doesn't it feel to like you're eating to survive, though. It's not like it, it, it's no, because you can die to your I'm point. I'm just boosting oh, you can die of, star- of starvation. Okay. You can, no, I mean you just get shot in the head and you just come back and you're. That's the one thing that gets annoying with griefing is like. All right, I'm back for the fifth time, like in the same area, and up oh, a uh, headshot. And yeah, I'm like back uh, again. In, like, in the story like mode, eating feels like something you have to do as Arthur. Like you can take him to a bar and sit down for a meal. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like you can you can like literally do that kind of stuff because your character needs to eat. You can actually eat in a bar. Yes, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. You know how in the bar you can order whiskey or beer. Yeah. in the, in online, you can order a, f- a you, plate. There's also food options in, oh, that's in nice. the game, and that's nice because it's. An affordable way to just quickly boost up your health and dead eye again. Huh. To me, it's the camp. The camp, like the fact of like in hunting in the single player. When I hunt, I bring it back to the camp. I bring the deer back. Throughout that whole campaign, I didn't hear them be like, "Man, we're really starving" or anything. Because, because you're always bringing in always food. bringing in food for the camp. That was my role in that, that that I took on in their immersion because that's the part. Yeah, I liked. like you I look forward to that. You part. had to support your camp. Yeah, everything yeah. you're doing for yourself for money, you would literally be doing for the camp in that game. Yeah, like, all sure. my upgrades in the camp were fantastic. Like yeah. by chapter three, I had the best like ammunition constantly there. Um, everyone's tent was upgraded. All that stuff. Yeah, I'm sure I'll really enjoy it whenever I do it now, now that I know all the mechanics. Yeah, I should have told you about that. You, yeah. I know you love that stuff. But you don't really Hold feel on. it in your experience that it's been too much. <laughs> There's some parts that are too much, the menu system, but I don't... So my issue is the... Clunkiness. The, everything with John. So like when, when everyone gets pissed because you spo- like you end the game, you die and you're John now, right? Yeah. And you have to... You're a farmhand. So you're doing all these stupid mini games, and I was like, man, this is dumb. This is like two hours of crap. So the end it's, of Red Dead 1. It's the same as Red Dead 1. Yeah. yeah the, it's the but, same thing. But the moment that the farm is in trouble, and they're like, listen, I don't give a shit about your past. Take out these guys. And you pull out your chest, and Abigail's yelling at you, and you're like, I got to do what I got to do. And you put that clothes on, and the original theme comes on. Oh, it's cool. It is fucking amazing. And I'm as, as a player, I'm like, that is fucking genius. To be like, hey, guys. This thing you're going to work on for six months is going to piss off ev- all the players, but it is literally building up to this one single moment. Well, it, because the whole point is that's the life that yeah. they're all fighting for, right? Is it's like John's this is life. the normal, the normal life, life of is shoveling shit. You shoveling literally shovel shit, shit. And, and milking cows. Yeah. And you uh, then have to recognize. Yeah, that's not fun, is it? No, like that, and he got paid less fun. than ten dollars, and he's probably in debt because the the amount of money he's getting paid is probably not but accumulating. To getting his on rent. your horse and going out and doing something like yeah. like for yourself, like it's a lesson. Even that's a fucking yeah, lesson it's, in the game. It's, I I love that because I was like, oh, this is, and you do it, and she gets upset because the the whole like sixty hour story is like, listen, she yells at him at one point, and I was like, oh fuck, I get that. You've literally watched all your people around you do this life and die from it, yet you have not learned. You still want to go into it full guns. Like, Arthur is sacrifices himself for John to realize, don't do this. And like, he does this it. is where it ends. And he di- yeah, but, yeah, he, like, but ultimately, that's the it, failure of the Dutch Vanderlyn gang. gang is yeah. The same thing happened to it John. He raised Jack to say, mm-hmm. don't do this. <laughs> don't the, live this life. the most life. heartbreaking part where he's like, don't be like me. I don't want you in this life. Like he, yell, him and Abby talk about it. Yeah, he's like, no, I don't want that for him. I want him a different life. I want him to get and an education. Kn- and you, and you know, know that it's you not going to happen, happen because, because they all yeah. get gunned down in Red Dead One, yeah. and he get he's a thirteen year old that doesn't have parents and becomes an outlaw. I love how I tried to talk about immersion in a video game, and we went right back to like how great the story is. Sorry, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, because the story's great. But more importantly, I have a question in. for Brett. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So uh, we we talked a lot about the single player, which then made you go like, oh, maybe I should check that out. Um, what the fuck did you think single player was? Because the stuff we're talking about is not that mind blowing of a concept. In fact, he it's the did. same thing that was Red Dead One. He did share with me stuff at work. He's like, I've and now I get that you've played so much GTA. I've played I've every GTA game that has ever been, uh, and that's what he thought it was. I thought that I was just goddamn GTA reskinned. No, and, like this... no, it's Red Dead Redemption Two, meaning it's the sequel to Red Dead Redemption. They're going to treat it the same. Yeah, which was like GTA with a Western theme. No. 
but it, well, well, yeah, kind there, of. Because he <laughs> does, kind of actually, please, you are please right. Please give us examples of your bullet point missions that I was like, God damn it, I hate you. All right, so okay, Arthur, I need you to go to that storehouse in that other city where the guys that aren't us that do a lot of things like we do. Oh, Driscoll. Okay, they keep uh, some or Skinner's gun, or anybody. Or gun, yeah, they we... Go get the box of gun from there and bring it to here. All right, go. <laughs> Oh, all right, Arthur. There's a big old thing out in the woods. Guess what? It's a question mark, question mark animal. I need you to go kill that and bring it back here. Bear mission okay. in the beginning. Hey, no. now there's this guy that's in town, right? And he's got a, fa- a, f- a very fast horse, and it's faster than my horse, and we we need that in horse. In roads, you steal the go, horses. Go get that yeah, horse. Yeah, but that's the fuck with the horse. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, guess what? There's a box in this town that has a lot of shiny things in it and we need those <laughs> things because we need a better life go get that box and Robin bring it bank. here hey you know this place needs is more bullets we don't have a lot of bullets go get the bullets and get them to here <laughs> hey donating to the get, camp yeah. alright yeah. Arthur you remember when we killed all those guys that were like us and now they're all gone well guess what Arthur big news we're in a new place and there's another group of those guys Veterans. <laughs> I need you to go get them Okay. Hey. All right. All right. We got. <laughs> you okay, so, <laughs> yes, with the best story I've ever played. Yes. Sandwiched on top of it. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. a skeleton. There, there is still the GTA element of like, well, I've got these three points I can go to. Each story is going to be like, if I go to Dutch, he's going to go tell me to get this. If I go to Hosea, we might go fishing, right? So like, they, there yeah. is that element of you go to them and they start a cutscene mission. <laughs> However,. The whole point is not those missions. It's what you do in between. The immersion yeah. to go to go back into that is that it's like, yes, go to this person and get the gold from this person. But in GTA, it would be like a coked out rock star or something you don't care about. Right. And in this, it's no, it's a poor farmer's family that you beat the husband to death in front of them. Uh, I'd like, like to state for the record, I did not beat him. You did him. not beat him, but I you're still covered him. in blood. I did beat the husband, but he did not die at that time. He didn't die, yeah, but either way. At, like that, you, time. at that time. I just exacerbated his tuberculosis. Thank yes. You. That was, he so, coughs tuberculosis into your face. It's, it's beating that poor it. farmer is how you get it. Yes. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. And the sun warned you about it. Yeah, but so it's those, you're like, man, there is weight to what you do. There is like this whole narrative. By investing so much time in the story and making people feel more real, it's not... Oh, I went there and stole the horse. Like it's, it's, it's more re- like you're like, no, you're depriving them of some how they're gonna live probably. And then you find that woman later, uh, and she's a, a prostitute with like diseases and everything. Oh, oh yeah, geez. yeah. After you find out that you have tuberculosis, all of a sudden this this thing that happened chapters ago. Yeah. All of a sudden it's just like, it's hey, do you want to do you want to go make this right? Uh, do you want to go uh, give them money? Hey, Arthur, yeah. get, uh, quick, you get that horse that we stole that made these people poor. Uh, you gotta go talk to him now because you feel bad. Nope, Dutch wouldn't tell you to do that. That's just something you get to choose <laughs> whether or not you want to do it. Do it. No, by the time that <laughs> happens, Dutch should be like, we could use this. Yeah. Uh, come, wait, you're come, saying her husband died and they come, have no money. Come be part of our house. I need a moment to think. I need all the noise <laughs> to have, stop. Oh, that part of the immersion too, the camp, when the camp gets divided... And Bill is like, you guys got to have faith, all this treachery talk. And he's like, just starting shit with everyone at the camp. I love that, too. Like, that it evolves and changes, and everyone here had a different experience. Yep. Like, I didn't go back to that woman. I didn't know you could make it right. That's awesome. I was like, oh, I guess that's just a foreshadow of, like, fuck, I'm an awful person. That no, point, you can like, go make it right. Well, I think if you're a good person, you yeah. can. You were Red Hat, so you I might was, not have had so that my option. Favorite red hat story. Right. <laughs> so my favorite Red well, Hat story. Well, you give story. them a ton of money, because like you, yeah. you're dying, and you're just like, I don't need this, so you can have it. Uh, spoiler, you, you don't end up actually making it right. No, you don't. You they're, don't. They're, they're <laughs> Everything's terrible. awful. Also, hey, though, fun you, fact, you even got though... You got the syphilis. Here's $3. Even though... Well, $3, that's like $8 million right there. That's good. Even though... Sadie would have been a great character for the epilogue. I also still would have loved to have played as the son of that guy who gave you tubercul- tuberculosis. Oh, yeah. And that you just hated Arthur. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's and an like, this is him just trying bad. to, like, he doesn't know Arthur died, so he's hunting down a dead man. <laughs> I would have loved that. Finds Micah, gets to kill him. Here, I'll write the DLC for that. Thank I you. hate that guy that killed my dad. I'm going to find his friends and kill them. All right, well, if you want to find them, then I need you to go down to the uh, other town and get the box. <laughs> Bring it back God here. Damn it. Hey, guys, That's... I have a really important question, though. Uh, how long is this fucking episode? It's like, uh, an, hour. It's like an hour right now. Woo! Oh, an hour. This is a good Red Dead. 
Yeah. All right, if you're listening to this now, you need to go down to the store and get the box. <laughs> which which you need to go to your is home. Go, go, in. go tap on your browser, <laughs> patreon.com. Yeah, you're going to go to Patreon and search for Go Folk Yourself. Yeah, then, give, you know what? While you're in the podcast app, go ahead and like and subscribe. Yeah. Give, give us five stars. Give them $1. That's the equivalent of $9,000 in, in Victorian money. Do, do me a favor. Tell your friends. And I, I know you. You're sitting there with all these doubts in your mind. All just, this doubt. Just, we got a plan. Don't, Trust us. We got a plan. We got a plan. Remember, you got to smoke those cigarettes if you want to get good at <laughs> slowing down time, okay? Because that's how it works. <laughs> smoke them to the end. There's no filter. This is the Victorian era. They're $19. Well, thank you all for listening to whatever this was. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, like and subscribe, that is your mission. That's very important. Yeah. Bye everyone.